Greetings, I'm the dentist. In our dent agenda, we will be starting the second chapter, Preventive and Community Dentistry. These are the points included in this chapter video series, starting with point number one, dental caries. And these are the points included in this tutorial. Caries process. Dental caries is an irreversible microbial sugar-dependent disease of the tooth hard tissue, as it is produced as a byproduct of the metabolism of fermentable carbohydrate by plaque bacteria, which results in a drop in the pH at the tooth surface. In response, calcium and phosphate ions diffuse out of the enamel, resulting in demineralization of the organic portion of the tooth, followed by its destruction. This process is reversed when the pH rises again. Caris is a dynamic process characterized by episodic demineralization and remineralization occurring over time. If destruction predominates, disintegration of the mineral component will occur, leading to cavitation. Caris progression rate. Although it has been suggested that the mean time that lesion remain confined radiographically to the enamel is three to four years, there is great individual variation and lesions may even regress. The rate of progression through dentine is unknown. However, it is likely to be faster than through enamel since it is more permeable. Progression of fissure caries is usually rapid due to the morphology of the area. Rapid progression is especially common in the first molars, with progress from early dentine involvement to pulpal involvement in less than one year in some cases. And if it left untreated, it involves bone and PDL. Enamel caries. The initial lesion is visible as white spot. This appearance is due to demineralization of the prisms in the subsurface layer, with the surface enamel remaining more mineralized and almost intact. With continued acid attack, the surface changes from being smooth to rough and may become stained. And these areas of the early decay are called incipient lesions or incipient caries. As the lesion progresses, Pitting and eventually cavitation occurs. Fissure caries often starts as two white spots on the opposing walls, which eventually coalesce. Dentine caries. Dentine caries comprises demineralization followed by bacterial invasion but it differs from enamel caries in two points. The first is the production of the secondary dentine throughout the process and the proximity of the lesion to the pulp. Once bacteria reach their melodentinal junction, lateral spread occurs, undermining the overlying enamel. This diagram shows different types of dentine. Number one, primary dentine. It forms before the complete root formation and it forms the main bulk around the pulp chamber. Hence, it is called circumpulpal dentine. The outermost layer under the amelodentinal junction is called mantle dentine. Number two, secondary dentine. It forms after the complete root formation and a deposit around the pulp roof and chamber leading to its asymmetric size reduction or recession by age. Number three, tertiary dentine. It is also called reparative or sclerotic dentine. It forms on the pulp dentine border as a protective response to trauma, attrition, abrasion 
or restorative procedure. Areas of dentine, where the tubules have been filled by mineralization, producing a denser, radio-opaque dentine, which is the tertiary dentine. Root caries. The root surface does not possess a hard protective enamel covering that is as thick and durable as the crown of the tooth. Instead, it is covered with cementum. When gums recede below the enamel line or pull away from the tooth, the root surface becomes exposed. This unprotected surface is much thinner and more vulnerable to tooth decay. Note that root caries can only occur if the root of the tooth is exposed through gum tissue recession or loss of attachment between gums and tooth roots. Gum tissue recession and increased periodontal pocket depth typically occur due to untreated gum disease, due to genetic disorders, systemic disease as diabetes, traumatic injury, poor oral hygiene, aggressive brushing, tobacco use, and as people age. Treatment requires first control of the etiological factors, and for most patients, this involves dietary advice and oral hygiene instruction. Teeth might feel sensitive, loose, painful when biting, and the surrounding gingival tissue might turn red due to inflammation. As you can see, bone resorption leads to root exposure and subsequently root caries. Arrested caries. Arrested or inactive non-progressing caries. Under favorable conditions, a lesion may become inactive and even regress. Arrested enamel caries can be stained dark brown or black in color, as sulfur salts become incorporated into the remineralizing tissue. Arrested dentine caries has a hard or leathery consistency and is darker in color than the soft yellow active decay. Once these lesions remineralize, they remain resistant to further caries attack unless there are dramatic changes in the oral environment. Arrested caries requires no restorations unless they affect form, function or the aesthetic of the tooth. Rampant caries. Rampant or nursing caries is a suddenly appearing or acute onset, widely spreading caries, may involve many or all erupted teeth, resulting in early pulp involvement, in which more than 10 new lesions appear every year on healthy teeth surfaces, which are generally immune to caries, usually seen in children and can appear in adults as well. It is mostly due to radiation therapy around the head, use of certain medications as tranquilizers, xerostomia, sugar-loaded dietary habits, nursing overnight without cleaning the teeth afterwards, and the use of sweetened pacifiers. Susceptible sites These are the sites on the tooth which are particularly prone to decay and where the plaque accumulates unhindered, like the approximal enamel surfaces, cervical margins, and pits and fissures. Host factors that make teeth more susceptible to caries are volume and composition of saliva. Other factors include tooth location. Decay most often occurs in the posterior teeth, like molars and premolars. Dietary habits, poor oral hygiene, not getting enough fluoride, especially in early age, younger or older ages, xerostomia, in which saliva volume is low, low pH, as 5, is considered critical for tooth minerals to dissolve, like in cases of gastroesophageal reflux, leading to acidic oral medium. Saliva and caries. 
Saliva acts as an intraoral antacid due to its alkaline pH at high flow rates and buffering capacity. It also decreases plaque accumulation and aids in clearing foodstuffs. It acts as a reservoir of calcium, phosphate, and fluoride ions, thereby favoring remineralization. It has an antibacterial action because of its immunoglobulin A, lysozyme, lactoferrin, and lactoperoxidase content. An appreciation of the importance of saliva can be gained by examining a patient with a dry mouth. Chewing sugar-free gum regularly after meals stimulates saliva production. Xylitol helps to reduce tooth decay as it stops the production of tooth decay causing acid and neutralizing the pH level in the saliva and plaque. And it does appear to decrease caries, but the reduction is small. Caries prevention. Approaches that are possible to prevent caries include reduction in the availability of microbial substrate by plaque removal using physical or chemical means, dietary advice to the patients, fluoride application, pressure sealing, and young age, regular tooth brushing, which is also important in prevention of the periodontal disease. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to have you here for more videos. And follow us on Instagram at Dented Gender for extra tips and tricks.